Plastic 3D printed suppressors have gone from internet rumor to real world range testing. Today we're breaking down what these suppressors are, why people are talking about them, and what the material science actually says about their performance. Welcome back to 3R Ballistics. I'm Matt and today we're covering kind of a hot topic when it comes to 3D printing in plastics and polymers. So before we go any further, it's important to be clear. Any suppressor we show or discuss in this video has already been legally registered. Unfortunately, suppressors are still regulated items by the ATF and there's no legal shortcut around that, regardless of how they're manufactured. So this video is purely for entertainment and discussion. Now, with that being said, filing a Form 1 with the ATF now costs nothing, which led the first few days of 2026 to be flooded with new applicants uh, filing their uh, Form 4, Form 1 to uh, get approval. Now, the ATF site, as you know, it uh, crashed or just continued uh, runtime errors. However, I'm here to tell you that as of today, the ATF Form 1 registration site is working and taking about four days to come back with approval. So that begs the question, if there are no other fees associated with filing a Form 1 as the manufacturer for a tax stamp, do plastic suppressors have a place in firearms? Let me start this whole rant with the word plastic. I know that's a very generic term for all the polymer type products currently used in the firearms industry, from lower receivers and frames to accessories and even casings, as we've seen with True Velocity's new offering. We also have polymer in discarding and non-discarding Sabos, which I have printed out myself. So with polymers being used so frequently within the firearms industry, why do we not see polymer suppressors? I believe it's because the suppressor is in one of the harshest environments a firearm component can experience. It's got rapid pressure spikes and extreme heat, vibration. That makes it a great test bed for modern materials. Uh, the question isn't whether a polymer suppressor can survive a single shot but how it handles repeated thermal and mechanical stress over time. This is where filament choice or lack thereof has failed us in the past. Normally we were left with PLA, PLA plus, but in recent years, filament choices have expanded enormously. We now have printable materials like PA6CF or carbon fiber reinforced nylon. So why is that so important? Well, in past, most 3D polymer printed suppressors have failed us in the heat resistance. Over time, your bore will open up, you lose suppression, and then it ends up just being a plastic tube. Now with PA6CF and other uh, filaments, it combines high temperature resistance, far beyond standard plastics like PLA. So compared to PLA or even PETG, PA6CF behaves much more like engineering polymer, especially under heat and pressure. Okay, now it's important to be realistic. Polymer-based suppressors are not magic, and they're not a substitute for proven metal designs in high round count or extreme use scenarios. But for their cost, and as a demonstration of how far materials and manufacturing have come, they're impossible to ignore. With the demand on metal suppressors on the serious rise, I'm guessing the price of metal suppressors will also rise. So let's talk about the costs associated with printing these polymer suppressors. It's less than you think and it begs the question of viability. To go from filament to working suppressor is about 50 to $80 all in. That's it. Now you still need to file a form one with the ATF to explain the materials you're using. You know, then you have to serialize it. Then you have to wait for approval. Then it's legalized for you to use. However, 
the additional cost of $200 that was associated with the tax stamp in 2026, that's gone. So besides a little extra paperwork and waiting time for approval, for about $60, you can legally have a polymer suppressor. And as we know, 3D printing allows for some impressive engineering when considering flow through design and baffle design. Now, let's not confuse current 3D printed suppressors that are made with titanium or ink canal. Those are completely different than what I'm talking about today. 3D printed metal suppressors are a thing and very popular as you've seen with Huxworks and other uh, commercially available suppressors. And their popularity is on the rise and possibly even the cost, supply and demand, that cost may go up. And some of that technology that the 3D printed metal suppressors are using might and can be interwoven between the two platforms, the metal 3D printed suppressors and the polymer 3D printed suppressors. So the question we've been all dying to know, do the polymer suppressors work? Well, in testing, suppressors made with advanced polymers show some surprising characteristics, including different heat dispersion behavior, different sound signatures, and unique wear patterns compared to traditional metal designs. While they don't replace metal suppressors in every role, they do raise interesting questions about weight reduction, rapid prototyping, and especially cost efficiency. So this is an FTN 30 cal model. Now let's look at this cutaway of this design. The internals, like most suppressors, contain baffles and a gas mitigation, just like any other suppressor. This model is a quality designed system and should work. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that printing with PA6CF is, is as easy as printing with, you know, PLA. It is not. You have to worry about print speeds, nozzle temperatures, bed temperatures, uh, enclosed chambers, you know, bed uh, adhesion, warping, humidity, and so much more. But once you have it down, they seem to be very sol solidly built. And this is just a discussion of viability for polymer suppressors. I am not advocating for those to go out and, you know, check to see if this works. That's what I'm here for, to do the testing. Because as you all know, with supply and demand, two things tend to happen. The prices tend to go up and wait times as far as current stock available for suppressors may extend. There may be a lot more out of stock items. That is where this is viable. You know, if the prices just raise tremendously or suppressors just start to go out of stock because more people are wanting them. So that's why we're doing the testing. So let's talk about the real world testing. What type of testing would you like seen with this polymer suppressor? Light and easy round count or hard and heavy to failure? Leave a comment below and I'll work to test the most commonly requested method. Also expect a part two video in the next few months to see how this polymer suppressor worked out. And if you like this type of content, you know, material science and ballistic testing, please remember to subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe and until the next one.